If Arizona's without Quali, or excuse me, without uh, Ja'Cory Krosky Merritt for the rest of the season, where does the running game stand? You are Locked On Wildcats, your daily podcast on the Arizona Wildcats. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thanks for keeping it locked on Wildcats. I'm your host, Mike Luke. This show is brought to you today by Ultimate College Football GM. Check it out. Ultimate College Football HC. Download from the app stores or visit ultimate-cfb.com. 100% free boost. Use code locked on CFB in the game store. Okay, now. Arizona football, Kansas State, it is here. There is all kinds of stuff that we need to uh, get to about this. Now, the first one is the running game. Uh, we talked all off season about Ja'Cory Krosky Merritt and about how good he is. Um, fans could have watched that game against New Mexico for five seconds and said, yeah, that team is, uh, that guy is really, really good. And uh, it was easy. It was easy to see. And a big reason why is because he can kind of do everything. He is, uh, he's sudden, he's sudden. He can uh, run with power. He's not the biggest dude in the world, but you can just see him. And he's a guy that looks like he could play in the NFL. He runs hard and he is talented. Those are two very good things to obviously have in a running back. So there is that. And then He's older. That's another thing that you really like in that, you know, he, again, he's an older football player. That's very, very good. And you can just tell that he's good. Now, the big problem, though, now is that there's a lot of people raising questions about whether he is eligible. Now, to go back and um, to go back and kind of rehash things, he um, he was initially thought to be ineligible, played a bunch, uh, played a, an extra season at Alabama State, but then one of those coaches came forward and said that no, the school was too poor and that they had to basically change jerseys. Well, um, comes to find out that may or may not be true. We will uh, we will see how that one does play out, but. Um, that uh, there have been questions. And here's how this works with the NCAA. If the NCAA clears somebody, you can play them. But if the NCAA comes back and then says, well, um, we do have questions about uh, this player and his eligibility, then you're, play, you're basically playing him at their, your own risk. Arizona, in my opinion, was smart not to play him, was smart to um, – uh, um, Arizona was smart uh, – Arizona was smart to basically be – that uh, was basically smart to say that um, Air, that you know Arizona could be uh, you know in a, in a good position right here either way with the running back spot. So we will find that one out. A uh, big part of this too is that uh, Jacory Krosky Merritt is very very talented, um, but we need to talk a little bit about Quali Conley. Um, Quali Conley is absolutely fantastic. He is a uh, he is a running back that uh, he is a running back that can do a lot of different things. And not only can he do a lot of different things, he can uh, catch the football. He is also a very very smart running back. That's the thing. He sets up his blockers really really well. He is a um, you know, and you can just watch him. If Quali Conley were to be your starting running back all season, I think he'd rush for around twelve. Yards. That's the kind of running back that I think he is. He's like I said, he's very, very skilled. He can do uh, and he can catch out of the backfield. There's a lot of Michael Wiley in him, and that's obviously a good thing. Michael Wiley, I thought, was a very, very underrated running back during his time here at the U of A. And it still would not surprise me if he's able to get on an NFL team and stick. But Quali Conley is that dude. He obviously has a very good rapport with this school or with this coaching staff and he can just kind of do everything. He's a great, he's a jack of all trades and a, uh, you know, a master of many. Um, Arizona's in very good shape either way. If it, uh, if you have to ride with Quali Conley. And I think uh, this, I think uh, everybody out there should know that one. Um, the other thing too, that I love about him is how he is able to catch the football and uh, he can just do a lot of different things. Plus, look at it this way. A lot of people are like, well, you know, at San Jose State, he did this or that. 
I don't really care. Um, at San Jose State, he is a uh, he's the dude that could catch out of the. Uh, you know, these were de- these were good football teams, and he caught for what? Uh, you know, or he uh, rushed for what? Two thousand yards almost. Um, those last two years, and at about seven yards per pop, this coaching staff, um, excuse me, clearly has a great deal of faith in him and. I think Arizona is going to be just fine. Now, I don't think that he has quite the pop that a Chikori Krosky merit has. Um, that is definitely, I think, a little bit of a concern because, uh, again, merit just merit just looks a little bit different. But I think Arizona is more than fine if you've got to move forward with uh, Quali Conley as your running back. We will uh, we'll see how this uh, we'll see how this does play out. But so far, so good. Fairly impressed by what I've seen from the uh, fairly impressed by what I've seen from the young man, and I think that he is going to get better the more that he gets carries. Now, that's something that I think you'll see. Uh, you see that with a lot of running backs. The more carries you get, the better you get. And, and I think Quali Conley will do just that. Plus, you're going to need that experience out there as well. Um, I think Arizona is in very good hands with him no matter what. Then the other running back, too, that you're looking at now, I think is probably Kedrick Riesano. Uh Riesano out of, uh, obviously, an Arkansas transfer. This is a kid that was uh, uh, looked at last year as a pre- or as, uh, one of the top 10 running backs in the country. If you watched him in camp, you could just tell that he is a massive, massive individual. And it, he looks he's another guy that looks different. You can see why he's a year removed from being a top 10 running back. And I think what you really like about those guys as well is that he can fling or is that he can um, he can run you over and he can run past you. With uh, transfers like that, you also wonder how really good are they? I think the question with him is, he can be, uh, I think he can do a lot of different things. What he's able to do, I think that is very, very impressive is he can run the, uh, um, he's, he's, he's one year removed from that. So when you're at Arkansas, if you don't play a ton as a true freshman, I get it. But it's generally the players where you're like, all right, three or four years bouncing around. And they're not very good. Then you start to wonder, all right, really, are you good? Was that just a missy valve? That is not the case at all with him, obviously. Um, he is uh, He's going to be that bell cow next year. He's going to be the one in the backfield that is going to get a lot of carries. He's, uh, he's, he's, he's a beast. He is somebody that I think Arizona fans are going to be very, very happy about because watching him, you can just tell that that's an NFL back right there, just kind of like how we talked about with uh, Ja'Cory Krosky Merritt, that that's an NFL running back. That this uh, this young man looks the same way. He's somebody that I could see rushing for 12, 1300 yards and uh, being uh, you know being very good in the uh, being very good in the process. Um, but those are two big, all right, and that's going to be kind of your big back. We're going to talk about Alonzo Carter in a second about how he likes his running back room. But one thing that he's done and that he's clearly shown is that he knows how to fill out a running back room and not only fill out a running back room. He is a guy that uh, he is a play, he is a, a coach that likes a little bit of uh, everything, and that's something that I think you really like if you're Arizona. Now the next thing is, uh, fam, our guy Rayshon Speedy Luke. Um, listen, I've said this from day one, and I'm going to continue to say this, and we were going to get to that on the other side. But first, Ultimate College CFB, Ultimate College Football HC. Download from the app stores or visit ultimate-cfb.com. 100% free boost. Use code LOCKEDONCFB in the game store. Check it out right now. Again, college football is here. We're heading into week three. We got all kinds of good games coming up. I think that uh, this is the time that you want to be able to. Uh, this is the time that you want to be able to hop in there and make some plays. Check this out again. You get here's a great deal. Again, you get a hundred percent free boost. Use code locked on CFB in the game store. Another one of these where you will thank me later on this ultimate college football HC college football is here. Use code locked on CFB in the game store. And then uh, we also have game time, my friends. Check it out. All right. Now, here's the deal at the Alamo Bowl. We've all told you, I've told you this story a million times, but it's probably one of the best stories that we have. 
with game time. The great thing about this is that you can get tickets at the last minute. No matter where you want to go, check it out. Download the game time app today. Use code Locked On College for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms do apply. This is where it's at. Again, uh, going into the Alamo Bowl, Jason Shear uh, had a guy come up to him and said, "Hey, where can I get tickets?" And Shear said, "Don't worry about it. Just go to Game Time." It got him in, and he also felt good about it because he got a pretty good rate as well. Download the Game Time app. Use code Locked On College for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms do apply. Thanks for keeping it locked on Wildcats and making this your first listen of the day. I am your host, Mike Luke. Okay, now, 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 now. Let's talk a little bit about, let's talk a little bit about now uh, Rayshon Speedy Luke Fam. I've always felt this. The problem, I love, I like Fam, and again, I think Fam can play in the NFL. I really do. But the problem with him still is that he just needs to keep getting bigger. Jed Fish did a massive disservice by not redshirting him his freshman year. And he just, uh, you know, and again, if, the, if I would love to see them be able to uh, basically red, redshirt him this year, and then it can be him and Kedrick Riesano going forward. That is what I would love to see happen. I just don't like, well, you know, somebody like that, we've seen it before. We've seen the speed that he has. I'd like to see uh, Arizona be able to just redshirt him, let him, uh, you know, get stronger, get a little bit bigger in the weight room. And then I think it could be him because I still think that he's leaving a little bit out there on the table. Um, I think, it, you know, at this stage, Arizona's going with the two big backs. Quali Conley is a lot bigger, and Quali Conley, again, has been in college football a lot longer. He's got a lot more reps. And then uh, and uh, Reese No is just a bigger dude. I would love to see them red shirt, fam. And uh, then I think he is uh, – you've got a nice little one-two back uh, – punch in the backfield next year with Reese No and Speedy. We will see how it plays out, but I would like to see that. Now, the other thing, too, I got a lot of faith in Alonzo Carter. I think Alonzo Carter is one of the best running backs coaches in college football. I will say that I was a little uh, skeptical at first about Zoe, mainly because you get a lot of people that were like, okay, well, what's the deal with uh, – how uh, how good is uh, how good is Alonzo Carter really – because, um, you know, he's just basically been at San Jose State his entire time. Um, but this, the way that this man has filled out the running back room has been incredibly impressive. Not only has it been incredibly impressive, he clearly has an idea of what he's looking for. And he wants to have his big back. He wants to have his jack of all trades. He also wants to have his speed back. He wants to have it basically uh, all. And it's been, like I said, it's been cool to watch him fill out this room. He is a... Uh, he knows what he's doing. And keep in mind, too, this is a guy that lost jo uh, Jonah Coleman from his running back room, DJ Williams, and Michael Wiley, and he replenished it to where it was deep, and he replenished it almost immediately. You got other guys coming in from Texas as well next year. I uh, I like everything that I've seen from him so far. He's been very impressive, and I think that uh, as long as he is there, Arizona is going to have a nice little combination in the backfield of talented running backs that can do a bunch of uh, different things. So Alonzo Carter, that is a big, big shout out to him for everything that you know he's been able to do for this uh, you know this running back room and what he's been able to do. Let's be honest, in pretty short notice. So again. Give him a uh, give him a ton of credit for all of this. Now, the other aspect too that we need to talk about here moving forward is the O line. Now, a big part I think of the O line struggles was uh, at that center position. Uh, Grayson Stovall was decent in camp, but he had you know he, there were I think there were some issues there with communication. I mean, how many times did you see Noah going in a different direction than the offensive line? Big part of that too is that you know Josh Baker is back. I would not worry too much about that. Um, honestly, uh, not only would I not worry too much about it, I think it's going to be much, much better. We will see. But Josh Baker, like I said, can um, he's one of those guys that I don't think that fans are going to properly appreciate until he's gone. But a very, very good football player and somebody who I mean, let's you know, let's be honest, Mark probably won't play in the NFL. But he's been very, very solid for the U of A. He calls out the lines. He's the quarterback. He is the uh, you know he's the he's the dude that makes all of this run. Getting Baker back for the U of A is huge, and I think with the offensive line being um, the offensive line, you're going against a Kansas State team that's got a very, very good front. And this offensive line, I think, has to be ready for it. Now you're going to have Jonah, obviously. 
Uh, you're going to have, but you know, maybe Michael Wooten is at that other tackle spot. We will find out. I don't know. And I don't think anybody else really knows, but getting Josh Baker back is going to be huge. A big part of that too, will be enabled is Arizona, if Arizona can run the football. If Arizona can run the football, then the Wildcats are going to be in really, really good shape. Um, but uh, it, a lot of this starts with the offensive line up front. They've got to be on all. Uh, they've got to be uh, 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 firing on all cylinders because if they're firing on all cylinders, then Arizona, you know, has a real chance in this game. Because, like I said, I think Arizona's got the talent to be able to hang with about any school out there. I really do. Um, but so far they have not looked good in their first couple games. The nation's going to be watching this game. How is Arizona going to play? And I think that we are going to find that one out and we'll find that we're going to find that one out very, very quickly. Now the, uh, that, that the other spot then, uh, cause I don't believe Rhino is going to be back. I think Rhino, the, the hope is that Rhino will be back for Utah. If Rhino's back for Utah, then I think Arizona will obviously take that, but Michael Wooten's probably going to be that other tackle. Um, and well, I mean, maybe because he, uh, he was the, uh, he was that, uh, he was, you know, he's kind of been, uh, he's back. Um, but it's either going to probably be him or Ryan Stewart. Um, I don't think, and I think Arizona made the right decision here. I don't think they viewed Matthew Lotto as being ready. And honestly, I don't think that uh, he's ready either. Uh, I think there's a lot of potential there, but this is a guy that, you know, was brought in, I think, hoping that, you know, with a lot of people hoping that he would redshirt and, you know, if he isn't, uh, you know, and uh, honestly, uh, that's probably what he should do. I don't think he's going to redshirt. I think he's going to get snaps, but I think you got to go with experience here because you're about to go into a, a tough environment against a really, really good football team. And I think that, uh, you know, either uh, Michael Wooten um, or Ryan Stewart is probably going to be that guy. And then you got Leif in there as well. Uh, Stuart Leif going to play Josh Baker, Wendell Moy, Jonas Savanea. It's going to be big. That's going to be kind of the, uh, that's going to be kind of the, uh, the keys to the game. In my opinion is the trenches. If Arizona can hold their own in the trenches, then I think Arizona is going to be in a, you know, I think Arizona is going to have a very real chance of winning, uh, winning this game. If Arizona gets blown off the line or they're like moving in the wrong direction, like they were against NAU, then this is going to be a very long game. And I think we're going to know that one really early on, but this is going to be a massive game for the O-line and uh, Josh Oglesby, I think is really going to have to coach him up. Now it does help when you got somebody like Noah Fafita, because I think Noah is, uh, listen, the mistakes that were made last week, I think they're going to be able to get rectified. Noah has gone into a lot of tough environments and won football games. We also haven't seen Noah have two tough uh, football games in a row in a row. I, uh, and you're going in there. I think with him, you also know that this is going to be, uh, you know, this is going to be another time for him to be able to uh, uh, remind people just how good of a football player he is. And this is going to be T Mac's spot as well. Everybody knows how good T Mac is. This is, uh, listen, this is going to be a prime time national game against a really good football team. And I think T Mac is going to be, T Mac's going to be ready. Now, uh, you're going to probably see bracket coverage against T-Mac. I totally get that. And it's going to be up to a couple things. T-Mac's still going to have to be able to ball out, which I expect him to be able to do. But it's also going to be up to somebody like a Jeremiah Patterson to be able to make plays. If Jeremiah Patterson can make plays, then Arizona football is going to be in very, very good shape. Um, but somebody's got to take advantage of the uh, of that open space because there's going to be open space for, uh, the, for the U of A. And, um, you know, if you're Kansas State, why would you do the same thing that New Mexico did, where you're basically daring the best wide receiver in college football to just run open? It's going to be up to somebody else to be able to get that. Uh, it's going to be up. It's basically going to be up to somebody else to be able to get that one um, to get make make that one happen. And honestly, I think that I think it's going to happen. I've been talking about this one from day one. I think that Jeremiah Patterson is going to break out, and I think he's going to be breaking out here sooner than later. And it would not surprise me if this is the game. Arizona needs somebody else to step up. One player that I don't see being that guy ever is Montana Lamonius Craig. Um, you know, at some point you got to do it on the football field, and it just hasn't happened. I know that he's looked the part, he looks the part, but he just can't really get separation. He can't get open. And when you're playing good football teams, that's obviously going to be an issue. Now we're going to talk about another position here that I think is going to be very, very key for the University of Arizona. But first, five-hour energy. All right, college football's here. These are long games. Check it out. 
Five Hour Energy. Go to fivehourenergy.com. Use code Locked On CFB to receive twenty percent off your order. The great thing about Five Hour Energy is that again, it's like LinkedIn. It works. Everybody uses Five Hour Energy. Check it out. Uh, during the long day, if it's about two o'clock or whatever, and you're like, man, I'm really fading, get that five hour energy that will get you going. And it's worked for a ton of people. It can work for you as well. So again, five hour energy, go to fivehourenergy.com. Use code locked on CFB to receive 20% off your order. You again, you will thank me later. Thanks for keeping it locked on, Wildcats, and making this your first listen of the day. I am your host, Mike Luke. Okay, now let's talk a little bit about the tight end position. Arizona did not show the has not shown the tight end position much. In camp, it showed it a ton. And that's where we were talking about dudes like Key and Burnett and saying, man, can Key and uh, can Key and Burnett play in the NFL? Um, and can he be in the NFL sooner than later? Same thing with Sam Olson. A lot of guys that have some, you know, have really shown some real potential. We haven't seen that really at all. Now, I think the question is, are you kind of saving uh, all of your cards? Are you basically saying, you know what, we will see uh, come Kansas State. But uh, here's where I'm at with the tight end. You better utilize it. I'm going to be very annoyed if you don't. Because we've seen it all through camp. It's a highly capable tight end unit. And again, Kean Burnett, I believe, is an NFL uh, player. But you got to see it. I get the whole thing. I don't know that I necessarily agree with it, but I get the whole thing about, you know, wanting to uh, basically keep everything close to the vest until uh, until the real games start. You know, now again, you messed around and almost lost that NAU game, but it is what it is. You're to this point at this, you're to, you're at this point at this point, but that's where Arizona needs to, uh, in my opinion, Arizona, Arizona needs to be able to, uh, to take advantage of what it has here because it's got a very big tight end, a good tight end room. And I think you're going to be able to see them stay in block as well at times. So I need to see that. I need basically a lot of the stuff that we saw in camp, a lot of the uh, diverse formations, we need to see those now. Because, again, you didn't see really any of those in the first two games. If they did decide to keep everything close to the vest, I get it. But um, if they didn't and, and uh, there, we don't see any of that, I immediately am going to have major concerns. Um, now, Arizona, I think, I think Arizona has a very good chance of winning this football game. I know a lot of people are uh, uh, not feeling great about what we've seen so far, and I totally get it. But I also have faith that this is going to be something where this staff is going to show it. Because let's be honest here, like we said, there this is a talented football team. This is a team that um, that should be good and should be good uh, this entire season. I think this should be a nine or a ten win football team, honestly. And well, keep in mind too, you know, as much as this, it seems like the sky is falling. This still has the longest winning streak in the country, which is remarkable when you think about it. All right, now tomorrow we're going to start talking about Kansas State in depth. We're going to break down the players that Kansas uh, that Kansas State has. Everybody knows about Avery Johnson. People know about getting, you know, our Giddens, but you also got to be able to look at the defensive side. That's where it becomes very, very interesting because it's one of the better defensive uh, fronts in the entire country, and it's going to be a massive test very early on for the Arizona offensive line. You got to. I do believe you have a secondary though that Arizona can exploit as well. That's going to be an interesting one. Another one where you're going to need T Mac, I think, to really step up and just be that dude. And uh, but again, this is this is your test. The season starts now. If Arizona beats Kansas State, absolutely nobody's going to care about NAU or New Mexico. You're going to be going forward with a lot of uh, momentum. You go into an off week as well, knowing that, um, you know, can get everybody right, get everybody healthy for Utah. And that's where we're going to find out, though. But I think at this stage, um, it's a uh, it's a new season. And I think if you're Arizona, that's pretty much all you can ask for. But again, we will be back with you tomorrow, breaking down Kansas State. I'm your host, Mike Luke. Bear down, back the A, and thanks for making Locked on Wildcats your first listen of the day.